Valheim's build system is intuitive enough that just by playing the game and reading the tutorials it offers you, you can pretty much learn how to build everything you need functionally to complete the game. But as with many things in life, there are details you can learn that can really open up your creativity and allow you to turn thoughts into things. I'm Norden Freeman, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a number of details that will help you do just that. Some of these things you'll have learned through intuition, but some of them might be new. Either way, I wanna help you unlock your creative potential in Valheim. Let's get started. Valheim's build system allows you to put things in the world under two basic principles, the slap and the snap system. I don't know what they're officially called, but that's how I think about it. The slap system is what you're most used to. You pull out your hammer, you right click, you pick something you wanna put in the world, you point somewhere, and you click. If the terrain isn't flat enough, it'll turn red and it won't let you build there. Simple enough, the situation changes a little if you try to build on an object. Obviously, it's not going to let me build this campfire here. Let's try something a bit more sensible. So here's an item frame. You'll notice that at this little spot here, it goes a little berserk. What's going on? Well, what's happening is there are actually two meshes here, one of which is invisible. The tree stump you can see with all of its pixels and low poly glory is essentially an art mesh, but there is an invisible, simpler collider mesh. Though this is already a low poly object, the collider mesh has even fewer triangles. And the reason is because it's actually computationally expensive. That is to say, hard to calculate all the collisions between things like the player and the tree stump. That invisible mesh is what this is trying to snap to. And you can see that there are two different planes on either side here and that it's snapping differently. I'm not certain that that's precisely what's going on here. It may be this is the result of some kind of rounding error, but either way, that's a good way to think about it when this stuff goes berserk and why it's fairly difficult for advanced builders to build on things like rocks and trees. One cool hack you can do with the slap system is to make stacks of materials like this. All you do is you pick a material to build, point at the ground, hold shift so it doesn't snap to anything. We'll talk more about that later and just make a stack. You might rotate one to give it a little character. And there you have it, a nice little storage area. This can work with all sorts of stuff like beams, stone blocks and logs. But the far more interesting way of doing things involves the snap system. If you've built anything in Valheim, you've probably got a good intuition for how it works. Again, you use the hammer, you put down a structural piece, and then when you put down another structural piece, it will snap in when it's close enough. This system is incredibly simple and can let you build some really detailed things. What I want to show you today are some of the inner workings of that snap system and how you can leverage that understanding to get some really cool results really easily. Let's start with one of the simplest things you can build in Valheim, the beam. The beam has exactly two snap points and they are at the very centers of the end caps, not on the edges, not on the corners, but at the very center. And you can see this if you try to build things that snap to it. What Valheim did was it took the endpoints on these three structures and it overlapped them. This part is easy to understand, especially if you've built anything in Valheim. Here's where things get interesting. The game is going to try to merge these two snap points only if they are close enough. That shape is roughly a sphere. So if you sit here and play with this and you can kind of see the boundary where they want to meet. What this means is that when the game projects this ghost object onto the ground or on anything else you're building, you can try to put that ghost in a place where it's close enough to get that snap. Because of this, we're going to be taking advantage of where the slap system puts this ghost down to try to get these two things to merge. We're gonna use those facts to build this thing super quickly. Let's start with a single beam. What we are going to do is we're going to put the beam on the ground and the ghost system is going to snap the two things together. Oftentimes what I see people trying to do is to point at the joint and try to get it to fit in there. And sometimes it works, but sometimes it gets a little dicey and you have to be like super accurate. What's better is to point it at the ground where you think it's going to go. And if you do, they snap all into place very quickly. The situation is a bit more complicated when you wanna build an interesting structure like this though. However, we can use what we just learned to make this super easy. All I did was cleverly use 45 degree beams here and here, and a 26 degree beam here. Then I simply reversed it. This is a 45 degree and two 26 degrees here and here. Then I simply repeated the whole pattern. It makes a nice braid, even though it does require a little support. Anyways, let's go ahead and build this. Also, you might notice from my shadow that I'm floating, that's because I'm using creative mode here. If you wanted to build this, you would simply build scaffolding. Anyways, let's get started. Simply build the pillar. And now let's go ahead and put our first truss on. I slide the ghost image up, 
the two snap points get close enough together and it slots in place. Great. But now this one gets a little dicey. No matter where I put it, it doesn't seem to work. And if you fiddle with it enough, eventually you'll get something that works, but that feels really inconsistent. I'd really like to know what's going on here. The answer is super simple. Let's go to the repair mode. And if you'll notice, there's a bit of this front exposed right there. That means that if I were to point at this while in repair mode and then swap over to the beam mode, it'll slot right into place, no problems, no fussing around at all. In fact, I can do this with just about everything. I can get right in there as close as I can on that face, put the 26 beam in there, and if I rotate it correctly, it'll slot right into place. And if I take a look, it's exactly how we'd want it. Yes, things overlap a little bit, but honestly, in a build like this, no one's gonna notice that stuff. After that, things become relatively easy. I'm going to pick the correct beam, point at the face I want it to snap to, and click. I'll do the same thing with the 26 degree beams, rotate it, click. It's orange, so I'll just quickly build a support. To build this support, again, I'm gonna to try to snap it in here and you'll notice it's working, but it's not touching the ground. Instead, in this case, what I'll do is I'll point to the ground, click, and it'll snap right in. That's because the ghost image that was going here put the two endpoints close enough together so that it would snap. And then I'll just do all that again. And now we have sort of the same problem. Nowhere in here does it seem like it's gonna make it work. So what I'll do is I'll get this part right here, I'll target right there, and see, it goes right into place. Perfect. And there you have it, a nice braid. Now that we know that each object has snap points and the way you get things to snap in is by getting the ghost object's snap points close enough to the built object's snap points, let's go ahead and do a quick audit of where all the snap points are on every single object so that we can take advantage of them all. I haven't found any snap points on any of the structures in the miscellaneous, crafting, or furniture tabs here. That means that they all operate on the slap system. There's also a couple of things in the build menu that don't have any snap points, like the round pole fence here. But with that said, most of them do have snap points and most of them have snap points that make total sense. But there's a few hidden ones and those lead to some really cool hacks. We'll start with the simple stuff. Floors and walls all have four snap points at their very corners. An easy way to visualize it is just to put beams at those corners. That being said, it's pretty obvious, but I'm going to be using this beam trick to show you some very not obvious ones in a few moments here. Roofs are also pretty simple in that they have four snap points pretty much where you would expect them at the corners, but sometimes placing them can be a little difficult. Placing them on cross beams is not terribly hard. However, it can get a little tricky. And the reason this time is actually the way the game does projections. If you go to put regular roof on here, it's fine. However, when you go to put something like a corner on, the way the game projects the ghost image slaps the nearest point of the actual mesh against what you're pointing it at. That means it's very hard for the ghost image's snap points to get close enough to the built object's snap points so they never merge. So in order to get that, you generally have to aim for where the bottom of the actual corner is going to go. And then it works just fine. Just keep that in mind and you'll do all right. That brings us to these two roof tiles, the 26 degree and the 45 degree ones, and they behave differently. That is, they have different snap points. You can see that if you try to put a beam on it. There's no snap point here, but there is a snap point there. Same thing on the other side. No snap point, snap point. That means this has six snap points, one for each corner and these two here, and this one only has four. I don't know why, maybe that'll be fixed in a future update. The two triangle pieces have three snap points, one at each corner and nowhere else. X frames are also interesting in that they have a hidden snap point as well. If you look in the center, you'll notice you can snap to it. This allows for a couple of cool hacks. You can use the two at the corners, bring a snap point over like this, and then you can put three beams like this. These beams are closer than you could otherwise get them. This beam doesn't have any snap points in the middle, so there would otherwise be no other way to get this here. However, we'll see in a moment another way of getting this in a cooler way. Also, I have no idea what this thing is, but maybe you can think of something cool to do with it. It looks really neat, and it's just the star that I made earlier, except with X-frames. Most beams in the game operate like I showed you earlier. That is to say, they have two snap points, and they're both at the very centers of the end caps. That's true for the wooden and wooden iron beams, but the log beams are when things get more interesting. The reason is because they wanted you to be able to make log cabins out of them and have them look good. The vertical core wood logs have two snap points at the top and bottom, just like you would expect. Very simple and straightforward. The way they managed to get the log cabin aesthetic was with the horizontal beams. To show you how they did it with the horizontal beams, I'm going to place them on pedestals with the slap system by holding shift and just putting it on here. You can see it's not snapping. When I click, it's just on there. What they did was they actually put four snap points on these and they're not at the ends. They're at the very top and bottom at the ends. 
You can see this with the little beams again. Each one of the rectangular beams is snapped into one of the four snap points of the log beam. To triangulate where it is, I just made a little corner here, and what you can see is that that snap point is right there. The reason this is so clever is because now these things will stack accurately. By contrast, let's try to stack the rectangular beams. You put one on the ground, and then when you go to put one on top of it, you'll notice it's not snapping anywhere. The reason is because the snap points are on the centers of those end caps. There's no way for them to reach each other without these two things merging perfectly, and the game isn't going to allow that for obvious reasons. What that leaves you with is if you want to make a stack this way, you essentially have to use the slap system and try to get that as accurate as you can, and get that as accurate as you can, and so on and so forth. By the time you get done, you have something, but the problem is that it's not accurate, and whatever structure you build, beams connecting the floor and the ceiling will not match up nicely. What's more, this is also super tedious because you have to sit there and try to be as accurate as possible. My view is that this slab stacking is probably best left to making organic piles of materials like this, and not when making exact structures like this. There are a couple of gotchas that await anyone who tries to use these, but that also means there's a couple of hacks. First off, roofs. Because there's two pairs of snap points on the bottom and top, you need to make sure that you're putting the roof on the one you intend to. Second off, I think we've all done this before. We make a base, we go to build something on top of it, and now all of a sudden this thing is green. What we would like is for this to be blue like the ground here. To do this, we're going to use the result we got earlier. If we point at the top of the beam here, we get the top snap point. Instead, we're gonna point at the ground and get the bottom snap point. Now, this is nice and blue and better to build structure on. Another potential gotcha is when you go to put a horizontal beam like this on here, but what you really want is to have it on the top. From below, this is very difficult, but what you can do is build some scaffolding and simply put one on top, delete the scaffolding, and delete the one you don't want. I'm not going to say which one is better or worse, because I don't know that there is one. What I do want is for you to be able to choose which one is right for your build and be able to get there with whatever you start with. As a quick side note, using logs is an easier way, as I mentioned earlier, of getting this kind of stack here. Now for a fun little hack. I'm going to show you how to get this interleaved log structure in the corner here. You build your first wall, all you have to do is stack these things up. There we go. Normally when you build a corner, you simply put the next one here and it snaps right in. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with this sort of joint, but we might want to do something different. To accomplish this, I'll start the joint just like I did earlier, but only go up two. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, go to this part here, and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to slide this log up around here. When I click, it'll be right about in the middle. Now what I wanna do is to snap this log over to that joint. So I'm going to put in a new log. The problem of course is that it doesn't wanna snap. But wait a second, remember that I wanna get this ghost image to line up about where it's going to end up. So that's gonna be about right there. So I simply click and it's in. Now I can delete all the stuff I don't need. And I deleted the wrong one. <sighs> there, worked the first time, promise, lol. Anyways, now what I'll do is I'll simply build my next log structure off of this, but be careful, it may try to snap on the corner in the way you don't want right now. And there you have it, you get this really cool kind of joint here. Just be aware of what this means for your floor and ceiling. That is to say, pick either this side or this side to snap both your floor and ceiling to. Don't try to intermix them or you'll end up with weird results. But what if you wanted to build something like this? Well, I did this by simply holding the shift key and just sort of placing it as best as I could eyeball it. And when I step away, it doesn't look as good as when I looked at it previously. How would we actually get a nice straight wall like this? The problem is that we can't use these things. The reason is because, well, they are too far apart. How do I get in between? That doesn't work. So there's a couple of ways around this. The answer obviously is the door. No, but seriously though, the answer actually is the door. The reason is because they have so many snap points. Up top, they only have the basic two you would expect. One there and one there. On the bottom though, they have six snap points. One on the front of the frame, one on the back of the frame, 
and one in between. Those are three different snap points, and this is true on both sides. What that means is that you can use the door to accomplish snapping across very short distances. To do this, you're going to build multiple doors and snap them horizontally. You do want to be a little careful, because they have so many snap points you can end up accidentally doing that. Unless the build you're doing requires them to be that close, I would go with this. Now you can put logs on them. Again, you do want to be careful because this thing will try to snap on the inside there, but if you're careful, this shouldn't be a problem. Now, just delete the doors. And there you have it, a nice straight wall. However, there is a gotcha here. These things no longer line up with the one meter beams. Let me show you what I mean. If I come here and snap this on the bottom and go two away to snap it there, you'll notice that that doesn't quite reach. It can be that one or that one. It's a very subtle difference. However, if you do this across enough of these beams, those differences add up and you can actually end up with some pretty significant alignment errors. The best way around that is to simply not use these in here for horizontal structure spacing. Simply put down something that's horizontal here, snap it to the end, and then come back in here and snap it in like that. Now you can use the door trick to fill that in with another beam. It's not entirely perfect, but at least the rest of your build will line up properly. As a fun note, you can do this little thing here and make a waffle log pattern. Why you would want to do this, I do not know. But there it is, right there. Though gates don't have the same extra snap points that doors do along their bottom, they do have an extra one you may not know about. The one on the bottom and the top are easy enough, but there's also one about two thirds of the way up. This makes a lot of sense because this is one and a half wall tiles high. On the edge of the door itself, it only has a snap point on the bottom though. It does not have one along the top. Stake walls have four snap points, but maybe not where you expect. Two are along the bottom, but then two are about two thirds the way up. Stone objects are a little more interesting. Instead of having a snap point in the middle of a face or an edge, they have their snap points at the very corners. What that means is that each one of them has eight. That does lead to a couple of very interesting problems though, if you're not careful. If you set these things up side by side, there's no problem. However, if you ever need to curve, then you could end up with gaps if you're not careful. The reason we have a gap here is that the corner points there and there are the two that snap together. To fix that, when you go to place it, move it a little further and the other two will snap in. You can use this sort of idea to make cool props like this well here. All I did was I took each block, turned it once and snapped it in like I showed you a moment ago. You can also put a forge cooler on the side here to make it look like a bucket, or you can put one in the center there. If you're curious how I did that, it was pretty straightforward. I jump in here, I built this pillar straight down. I got out, I took the middle pillar out. I put this on here while holding shift so it doesn't try to snap anywhere. I put a forge nearby so it would let me place it. And then again, holding shift, I put this in here. The reason I need that little floor tile is because it won't snap properly if I try to do it on the post. Now I can simply delete that, get rid of the wood, get rid of the forge, and there you have it. Stone steps are pretty unremarkable in that they have the exact snap points you would expect, and the same is true of the stone arch. However, this one does have a really cool property regarding its center of mass. I'm not going to go too deeply into it here, but I do want to at least mention it. I have to be very careful with stone blocks. If I try to place it on the edge here, it collapses because it's not supported. However, that is not the case with the stone arch. If I would like to, I can simply put it on the edge just like that. That does not mean it's very happy though. If I do this more than four times, it doesn't work. After a mere four, that is cherry red. If I try to do it one more time, it'll simply collapse. That is oddly satisfying. All the other items in the build tab behave essentially as you would expect. Iron doors have the four snap points on the very corners. Stairs also just have the four. I mentioned earlier that round pole fences don't have any, but also spike traps don't either. Dragon heads just have one at the base. And that's basically everything in the entire game that I know of that has a snap point, aside from item holders and things like that. In future videos, I'll talk about how to make some more interesting props and how to use clipping in the center of massive stones to make some other interesting patterns. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please click like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.